We are working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash all-star events. Welcome to Rugby AM. It's unprecedented times, but coming up on this week's show, we have the next instalment of our exclusive behind the scenes footage in the England Knights camp. We go over to Leeds Rhinos and head of SNC, Chris Black, as him and JJB show us how we can keep fit at home. Warren Two Wolves give us their K2 teammates. And Jonesy, you are back on the sofa. I'm back. You're released by Igar. Released for five minutes, yeah, yeah. I think most people have got a bit more spare time on them. But I've been busy, mate. I've been keeping myself really busy. Yes. I always look at the bright side of life, and this is unprecedented times. It's really difficult. Uh, but Blake, tell me, what, what have you been doing with, with the extra time that the coronavirus might have given you? <laughs> bit of Fortnite with the boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I got some kit, uh, luckily, from um, training. JK, our strength and conditioning coach, he... Um, he said, you know, if you, if you want some kit, you can take it home. So I've got a rower on my balcony now, which right. just sits there and stares at me. So <laughs> it probably forces me to do a bit more and then, you know, trying to get out and get a, get a bit active with my running and stuff like that. Morgan, what are you doing in your, uh, in your new time? You're getting towards the age where people say, you know, you should be concerned, but you're out running, you're out doing the lottery, you're still working. Yeah, um, I love it. And, and I'm, I'm glad that they said you could go as long as you keep in distance. But uh, I go out every day. Uh, except Thursday, because I'm collecting lottery on a Thursday. But yeah, I go out every day and do a different, do a different run, do a different. So I don't do. It's not boring. So I'm not yeah. doing the same thing every day. So you do a different one, and I, I love it. It's great, and so long will make continue. How old are you now, Mick? What are you at? I'm 69. Ooh, when are you 70? Uh, day after isolation. So <laughs> 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 oh, last week we had Big Roy Dickinson, and it, yeah. it, social media has erupted because a lot of people weren't aware of Roy. He's a, he's a Leeds legend, so you've always known him growing up, and yeah, he's yeah. always been around the club. Yeah. I think the world now knows Roy Dickinson. He's, he's announced most, himself. His crackers. He's the he's like Hulk Hogan, isn't he? When he <laughs> when he jets off all over the world. Gets the bleach tan on there and his, his white bits go even whiter. But he's, he's, he's a Baron of Bromley. He he's Roy. <laughs> he was at Stanley, he played at Stanley, a very similar path to me and spent a lot of his career at Leeds as well. So I, I see uh, Roy on a, a, a plethora of fronts and I love his stories, mate. You know, I'm a big believer in stories and narratives and he's got some of the best. Have you got any about Roy, Mark? Because you have played against Roy. He's just a funny man. I mean, I remember Terry Clawson, and I was one saying when he, he was playing OKR, okay, Terry, man of many clubs, and he come to Leeds playing at Leeds, and somebody dropped ball. Clawson said, Oh, not another scrum. He says, and that Roy Dickinson said, I like him. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, But they were a character, who still is. I mean, and I've done some after dinners with him, quite a few, and uh, he's a funny guy. He mentioned scrums there because Blake's just thinking, Well, what's the problem with scrums? Scrums, when you played, were, were the brutal side of the game. Oh, I've, that's. That uh, convinced me to retire. Yeah, really. Yeah, when tell when, us the story about the, the day well, you retired. Well, the, the day I retired, I was playing at Oldham. I was in Swan Song. I was I was thirty seven, and uh, I've gone out and played first scrum down Kurt Sorensen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, proper, oh, proper art case, and first scrum down. Pff, Nut went in, so I nutted him back, and uh, he says, Nah, you tell me. I said, We'll see, I'm not going to back down, am I? So it goes on for 80 minutes, this nutting, every scrum. Was, oh. So final score was 10 apiece. And back in the day, if it were, ten a, if it were a draw, if, if you won away from home, you got winning money. If you, if you, if you drew, sorry, drew away from home, you got winning money. If you drew at home, you got lost in money. And I remember, <laughs> I thought, I'm going back on M62, back to Castle, I'm on uh, up motorway and I'm thinking, 15 quid less tax and I'm going to get a big headache and think, time to put boots on nail now. <laughs> <laughs> that is time and that's what I did, packed in. Tell me about Terry Clawson, because you, you mentioned him there, I've just started reading his book 
Uh, and what was really interesting, I know he's a bit of a character, I didn't obviously know him uh, very well, but um, in the first chapter of his book, he talks about having tuberculosis uh, at Featherstone, yeah. uh, which we take for granted. We have a, an inoculation as kids, and obviously yeah. very rare that anybody gets it these days. But back then, it was quite dangerous, and it nearly not just finished his career, it could have been life threatening as well. Well, it did, it's, uh, but he it was, it was, it was a tough character, wasn't he, Klaus, and wasn't it? Toughest and, toughest and funniest bloke I ever, I ever met. And uh, he he got through it. He come back and Featherson sold him actually. He went, I don't know, his first might have been to Bradford, but uh, he did a lot. S he, he went round, uh, Terry were all about money and no ever paying it most. <laughs> that was Terry. And, uh, but he was, he was a funny man. He was just completely funny man. He sounded like a very articulate guy. And it, it was, was, yeah. I was blown away because he wrote the book himself. His own autobiography. All, all, all the wrong moves. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, brilliant. It's I'm, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm a few chapters. It's one of the yeah. things that I'm doing whilst we're off. I'm going to get through some books. Yeah. Love reading uh, and learning a bit about the history. But it's really interesting. Tell us about your history because you did not play professional this. rugby till you got to yeah. Toronto. How was, how was that work? How did, it, how did that come about? Yeah, so I was um, I was playing New South Wales Cup for the for the St George of White Dragons and um, I was working. I'm a plumber by trade. So yeah, I was I was working for a bloke called Shane Millard who come over here and played. Billy Millard, yeah, I Billy played with him. Yeah, yeah. He had one leg, like, one leg out longer than others. <laughs> <laughs> other like, wow, wow. So he was, um, and he was. Oh, so I moved back from Queensland, and when I moved back, um, just to sort of help with my footy and stuff, I got a job with him because he he, he mainly hired boys that played footy and. He was pretty flexible with um, training and stuff like that, so he um, he put my name forward, and then we sent him some footage, and it kind of just snowballed from there. It um, it definitely makes me appreciate what I've got because I've come from you know working full time and you know, and playing part time, and so I know what I know what that experience is like. So I'm um, forever grateful that they give me an opportunity, and I'm here today. So do you well, still practice your, your plumbing? Do you still? Nah, it, it it's I've been out of the game for probably. You know, a little too long, and um, in Australia the standards and that are constantly changing. So, right. Um, Will you go back to it when you finish? No, probably not. It's something that I didn't really enjoy. A lot of our work um, was housing commission, like government work. Yeah. And we got called to this job, and I had the apprentice with me. So I got there, and there was about 14 people, and it was a Friday morning. So they'd just been paid yesterday by like Centrelink or the government. Yeah. So they're all on the cans having a drink and. <laughs> So I, I've rocked up and I'm like, right, and they go, yeah, yeah, in the toilet. And I went, right, so I went in there and I, the lid was down and I flicked the lid up and literally like the top of the toilet, the, about that far down from the top of the toilet, there was just a layer of like crusty like poo and I'm just, it, <laughs> I was just like, what? <laughs> I was just, my head fell off and the apprentices just looked at me and he's like, he, he was still a first year apprentice, so he's never seen anything like this. And he's looked at me and I'm just going, Go get the gloves, <laughs> go get a garbage bag and come back in. And he, he comes back in and he goes to hand me the gloves. Uh -huh. I said, no, no, you put them on. <laughs> he goes, what? And I said, what you got to do, I said, I'm going to hold the garbage bin open. You've got to scoop it down until I can fill it up with enough water to plunge it through. So he's scooping it and the smell was so bad. I don't know how long they were doing it for, but I rang my boss and told him. And he goes, he goes, what happened? And I told him what, like, you know, the apprentice had to do and that. And he goes, How's the kid? And I went, yeah, I don't think he's going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was rattled, mate. But that was, that was easily the worst, one of the worst things I've ever had to, to do. So. Yeah. You know, must have a deep emotional attachment to Toronto as well, being one at First Root Doors, and I've heard that you're the guy, well, I've seen that you're the guy that leads the songs as well. Yeah. So it's, it's got quite a, an emotive place in your heart, I imagine, Toronto, opportunities it's given you. Yeah, and that, like, you know, without, without Toronto, and, and it's a place that I, I hold very close to me, and... And my fiance, I met her there now, so I'm getting married later this year. Um, wow. Yeah, so it, like I, I love the club, and um, you know, I'm, hopefully I can just keep improving and, and stay here for a, for a little while longer. It's time now to go over to uh, to see our friend in the isolation chamber. And this week, <laughs> it's the big man, Alex Wormsley. Big chamber. Big big Al, uh, how are you doing? What have you been up to during this uh, coronavirus layoff? <laughs> Yeah, hi guys, hope you're all okay. Um, yeah, not a lot really, we've just been doing what we're supposed to be doing. Um, social distancing, keeping ourselves to ourselves, um, not being panic buying or anything like that. We've just been, you know, as a family, keeping ourselves busy. Thankfully, we've got a 12 month old and a, and a two and a half year old who will keep us, you know, very busy. You know, the, the, you know, there's a lot to do around them and 
by the time we put them to bed, you know, we're ready for bed ourselves. So yeah, the days are going by, but um, you know, we're just keeping ourselves busy, doing a bit of exercise here and then, um, keeping our brains going. Um, I'm gonna start an online course soon, I think, just to keep myself ticking over. And, yeah, not, nothing much, just, just counting down the days, really. Yeah, yes, Alex. I mean, uh, obviously you started at Jewsbury Celtic and then you went to, to Batley. I actually made my debut at Batley, which was a, a disaster. Dropped every pass. <laughs> uh, so what, what about your time at Batley? And, and 21, probably 22 or four, you actually played professional rugby league. And that is a, a message to anybody who don't get a scholarship, who's out there thinking, I ain't got a scholarship, what am I going to do? Just keep battling, never say never. And I think, obviously, that's you've took that through your career. Yeah, yeah, I love my time at Bally. Um, You know, it was great. And I think just, obviously, not, not going to the professional game until I was sort of 21, turning 22. Um, you know, I was 22 when I signed for Saints. And um, for me, that, that transition of going from the Jewsby Celtic to, to Bally was was great because although the intensity picked up and obviously the, the quality of the game was was vastly different. I think that, that feel of a of a good family club who was sort of everyone's mates and working together, which there is at every single rugby club really, to be fair. Everyone mucks in together. We're all working class lads who who sort of know the crack and um, everyone, you know, sings off the same hymn shit really. You know, I think everyone's the same in our in our sport, which is why we're so humble and um, and such a good sport as well. But for me, you know, I love my time at Batley. It was um, you know a real good stepping stone for where I am now. Um, and helped me in that in that transition to, to become a professional and for me, for me yeah I think the vast majority of people will go through the scholarship and will go through academies to become the professional get to the professional game but it's not the um, it's not the only route then I'd like to think that my example is one of them and if you're willing to train hard enough and, and do the right things on and off the field and you know just, just enjoy it to be fair I think that was one thing I've always done is I've always enjoyed training and, and I've always enjoyed playing and I think when you enjoy doing something and when it gets tough and it gets hard it doesn't seem quite as hard as other things then because you enjoy doing what you do and you want to work hard and, and that's the message for me is just just keep working hard and, and as long as you're enjoying it then who says there's there's no way to get to the top Yeah Alex mate uh, we've got a bit of a mutual friend in uh, Adam Quinlan mate uh, I just want to see uh, what your time was like when you were playing with uh, that guy and uh, is he as much of a pest as I believe he is? <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, I think he was, he was a bit of a pest in my time of playing with Quinny. He's, um, he's definitely a pest in, um, in, in many ways as well. Uh, but nah, I love Quinny, he's such a great lad. Um, you know, as soon as he come on board at Saints and he was a bit of a mute to be honest, never really said anything, but he soon come out of his shell. Um, after a few weeks and you know, real likeable lad and obviously he's a great player as well but uh, I think Pest sums him up pretty well. Grinlan the Pest, uh, mate what I want to know from you is I want you to give me some kind of inspiration, give us a challenge, something that I can do or take up in this unprecedented time when we've got this two or three or six month layoff, however long it is, give me a challenge, what have you been doing to challenge yourself and what single challenge would you throw at me? Um, a challenge, yeah. Um, well, I was trying to learn the guitar up until, um, well, until I dislocate my finger and I can no longer bend it. Um, so I unfortunately I had to put the guitar down then. But try learning the guitar, or if you're doing uh, the guitar, or you learn an instrument, I think that's when I have that much time on our hands and um, something I'd love to be able to do is, is play an instrument. Obviously, I think my guitar day is going to be over, but um, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. As well, maybe a course, I'm going to do an online course. Not too sure what yet, but I'll be doing an online course or, but uh, yeah, my challenge is learn the guitar or an instrument. Right, Al, to finish off, mate, just wanted to know how you're finding Christian Wolf. How is it down at Saints? Obviously, Justin's moved on. How has Christian been with all the boys? And he's sad to see your partner in crime, Luke Thompson, heading over to the doggies at the end of the year. Yeah, I think Wolf, Wolf has been great since coming on. He's obviously he's, he's different to Justin and um, I think once, you know, considering the year we had last year and what we achieved, I think a fresh set of eyes coming in with, with a different approach was good and probably what we needed. Um, you don't want to get bogged down by doing the same things every now and again, but you know, we've kept the core principles and Christian was big on that. You know, we had a good ethos there and um, there was a lot of things we don't need to change, but you know, obviously he's coming in and he's seen areas what we need to improve on, and that's something we've been working on um, so far. So, but he's, he's great. He's got the same sort of morals as, as Justin, and, and most coaches. He's a he's a family man. He's humble and he's, he's willing to listen and speak to his players. And 
Uh, thankfully, there's, there's a good approach here. Uh, but he's been great. You know, the boys really like him and we're enjoying, um, you know, being coached under him. Um, and yeah, and obviously, you know, obviously I'm gonna I'm gonna miss Tomo. He's um, he's an extraordinary player. He's been shown in the last few years how good he is. Um, you know, I've made it no secret my my thoughts on where he is in in terms of being one of the best in the world. And I think him going to Australia and playing amongst the, probably the best league there, he's he's gonna be able to go out and, and broadcast that and and show off what he is, is what he's shown in Super League. He'll, he'll do down there now. Well, so yeah, I'm gonna miss him. He's, he's a great lad off the field as well, but. You know, he's one player don't define a team and obviously, you know, we'll move on uh, next year. But yeah, I'm going to miss him. Big thanks to the big man, Alex Warmsa. We'll get him in the studio at some point this season if Rugby League returns. Hopefully it does. Uh, but it's time to finish the part with our first part of the England Knights documentary, the, the second instalment. Uh, Jonesy, you've done some fantastic work with this. You met some real characters, didn't you, as well? Mate, that's been the highlight. The England nights have been one of the highlights of my career. Really? Everybody talks about going and winning grand finals and playing at Wembley and that type of thing is wonderful, but meeting the people that you meet, and I say it every time, whether you've got a PNG or whether you play in Jamaica and, and, and working out a Leeds, some Paul Anderson, Skullthorpe, you know, I like Scully. I've thrown a few challenges up Scully this week. <laughs> uh, but all, all the lads that I've met in there, Sam Powell, they're not, every time I see him, and when you see him behind the lens as well, the camera, it's a lot different to playing yeah. against these people and to get to see a different side of people, really, really gratifying experience. But yeah, this is the uh, second instalment of part one. Have you managed to beat Scully at anything yet? No. 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 But <laughs> it's competitive, isn't it? I'm a perseverer, Simo. <laughs> well, Ask we'll leave you. <laughs> Go Ask on. him if he takes four men, four days to dig a hole. How long does it take two men to dig half an hole? <laughs> <laughs> Got me going for about three weeks this run. <laughs> See if you can work it out. Send your answers in. Say, 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 it again. say it to everybody. Takes four men, four days to dig an hole. How long does it take two men to dig half an hole? <laughs> right, well, you work that out in, during the half. Uh, check this out, England nights. We'll see you right here on Free Sports for more in part two. down so you're leading off back of Danny yeah, yeah. all right so just on this make sure you've got tunnel shape sure, man, sure, man. Yeah, yeah. all right you can be parallels with him there Greg be parallel with him yeah let's go yeah nice like it do you understand that principle Cruz if we can set that up all the time because for nines and whatever, I'll give you a bit of rationale why I'm thinking that, all right? Is instead of us going long pass, long pass and going fusions and all that type of stuff all the time, I reckon these are going to be triangles all over the place. Yeah. So playing a, playing a little bit of block type shape allows you to see what they're doing that you can fade people into space. Then. Well, this block here, just for your middles. All right, on this, uh, on this first sinker, instead of this block being wide and just being a play to get real out wide, what we've got to make sure is this leads here to hold marker and A, allows him then trying to isolate B or not even going further. Does that make sense? Yeah. Which will be three man to be fair, if they're leaving four. Yeah. So you should just strip them and get a load of numbers then. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, off go, get a drink.
Russia's situation. Obviously, he's, uh, knees flared up and stuff like that, so we don't want to put him at risk, so he won't be playing at the weekend. So, Josh, we've had a discussion, haven't we? And Josh is going to leave us after tonight. All right, so from my point of view and us as a staff and whatever, Josh, over the fallout and stuff like that, it's been a pleasure, mate. All right, you've been great. I think you've handled this situation really well as well. So, well done, fellas, well done, mate. Josh has been, uh, been great, he's been part of the, the KPS squad all year and uh, we were fully aware that uh, he missed or wasn't available for selection for Papua New Guinea because he, last year he had a fairly serious knee injury uh, and it's, he's come back from it this year and from that point of view, uh, his commitment and why I want to keep him involved this year and obviously he's a good player as well but he's, he's done the fallout and he's had a little bit of discomfort with the knee and then he's trained today and he's had a fair bit of swelling there on his knee, so we just it's precautionary more than anything. I've been playing on my mind for a bit now, just obviously to look after myself and in the off season and get these England nights, see how many he would cope with it. And obviously, it's got to a point where I can, don't get me wrong, I could probably play the game, but you know, my knee would probably be up there, and get through it. But long run with FC on my back of my mind and a good pre season. It's probably the best thing that I pull myself out and that's just only something that we follow by the chat about it's just the best thing for me, so that's what's happened. You've also not got to think about us thinking about this game, we've also got to think about Josh Bowden, Hall FC and, and that what comes in your future. If you look here, there's a, a mixture of Super League players and things like that. All right, there's a mixture of Championship and League One players. But what they're doing is representing. Because the opportunity you have here is representing England, respecting this, and respecting the game of rugby league. Sweet, and that comes with our attitude towards it. Which I'm not going to question that. If I'm honest with you, mate, I, th I think rugby-wise, I, I probably haven't improved a lot because you know the year I've had it's been been a bit of an awful year personally uh, you know I haven't played obviously I went from playing every single game last year to then this year I've sort of like you know I've struggled for game time and you know it's not been the, the best of uh, years and you know those times where you know like I'm just feeling like completely down and you know I'd go home on my own and it's just like we're, we're not been the best of the year but like I said you know I believe everything happens for a reason um, and I've, I've, I've come through it and you know, my mum and dad constantly telling me how proud they are, you know, how I've dealt with it. Because I'm sort of like, well, all right, crack on, what's next kind of thing, kind of mentality. And I think that's what you've got to be. So we've got to the kick. Let's compete on the kick. Make it awkward. Watch how tall he gets. Underneath, underneath. Let's go and drive. Yep. And then what's our mentality now? Hunt, what does Hunt Marker play look like? Talking, aggressive, being forward, being aggressive there. What's your job at A's, B's and C's? So if they want to skip crossfield, what's your jobs at A, B's and C's? Oh, I can like to think there's more than Joe knows this. What's your job at A, B's and C's? Regardless of who you are, you're getting forward, all right? Do not let them run across you. Keep going forward and inside shoulders and make them hurt. Back at Club Rugby, we've had an up and down. We are working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash all-star events. Welcome back, part two here, Free Sports. So we close the first half, Jonesy, with the uh, England Knights. The first half of what we're showing today. Fantastic work so far, pal. Um, just going to talk a bit about pranksters because... Um, we know that Mav were on teammates recently and there's some real characters in that Toronto side. Who's, who's the ones to watch out for? Apart from yourself, because I know you're a bit of a prankster. <laughs> um, if you want to talk just mental, Hakeem Maloudi, he's just, yeah. he's, he's out of control. Like, I've never seen anything like him. <laughs> well, it always, he's, he's, just always, he's just always dancing and he's just, <laughs> he's just full of energy and he, he cracks me up. But, um, <clears throat> If you go, if we go back to the first year, we had like Wheels, he was Gary Wheeler. Um, he was always up to up to no good, and um, we I lived in a house, and there was like seven of us in this house the first year, and and um, we needed a car basically to get the train, and um, we went right, hey, let's just have a look, and we looked online, and we found this Nissan Primera, and it was like 
300 quid. <laughs> so we split it between, there was me, Ryan Burrows, Tom Dempsey, and Joe Eichner. So we, we all split it, this car and, 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 got, and bought this car. <laughs> and one thing I didn't realise is, because in Australia, you, you can have insurance for your car, but it's not it's, you don't like necessarily need it to drive yeah. on the roads. You just pay your car <laughs> registration. So I was like, and everyone's going, oh, you need insurance. I'm like, nah, like, <laughs> not, surely, surely not. Anyway, looked online and it was going to cost us like, because we're all overseas boys, it was going to cost us like 1,800 quid to, <laughs> to insure this car. And I went, not a chance. <laughs> so we put it in Tom Dempsey's name uh, yeah. because like if anything come back, it was on him. It wasn't <laughs> us. <laughs> so and I, I remember we're at, we're at the gym and we we're training um, we trained in um, Burstall at the... Um, MP fit or yeah, 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 we trained yeah. there. And I remember doing weights and I, I poked my head out the window and I can't remember who, who was doing it, but they had fluoro pink spray paint and they're spray painting the wheels and they're spray painting it fluoro pink and they're putting racing stripes all over oh. this car. Oh. And I've just come down and I've just gone, oh my goodness, <laughs> <laughs> what is going on here? So we went, um, we, couldn't, we couldn't get the paint off the wheels, so we just <laughs> left it. So here these hot pink wheels and uh, I remember driving home from training one day and the coppers were coming back this way and we're driving past them and Dempsey was driving, I'm sitting in the front seat, he just, I went, oh no. <laughs> you just, you see the car, you, I looked over my shoulder, it's gone, it's come back, it's done a Yui and the lights start flashing. I went, we're good, we're done here. <laughs> and uh, so they pulled us over and they go, yo, you need insurance. And I said to Tom, I said, just play dumb. Like, just say you don't, in Australia, you don't need it. Like, you know. So he's trying to play dumb. <laughs> they go, oh, we're gonna have to take the car. And he, he, he goes, oh, okay. So we all hop out of the car. They take it, impound it. They go, you can get it back for 250 quid. <laughs> <laughs> looked at the boys and went, should we buy a new one? Then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just left. <laughs> Mickey, you, you had some pranksters. So was, you, you, in your era, it must have been next level. Well, it, I mean, when I played, I'm coming while I'll tell you about But first up, we were at uh, Oldham Watershed Inns and toilets were in dressing room. Just before we were ready to go out, Frank Mail was going to do his team talk and uh, I had to go for an earther. So, <laughs> so I goes like, and anyway, I'm in there and, he's doing, and all of a sudden, Goodway got a firework and set it and, think, and threw it in. A firework? And, and he went boom, <laughs> second I shot up, I ain't got my pants and I come running out and think Mailer's trying to do it, aren't we, all right, here we <laughs> I threw a bloody firework straight into it. Toilet, Health and safety. <laughs> Health and safety. <laughs> Imagine if yeah. that leads now. <laughs> Brilliant. Was that a lot of what it was about with you, mate? Just the humour and that camaraderie. Yeah, yeah you, so you got to smile on your face when yeah, you played. Yeah, yeah. And off it. And, and when we went to Castle, me and Brendan, we started doing lottery in, in 86, and we've been there ever since. And, but we'd, we'd a fun time. You ask any players, Mike Ford and thing, and any, any Aussies who come over, and we did all sorts of different races. We, we did speeches we did all sorts but it were all funny and people uh, loved it and people come to play i think i, th I think because we had a, we had a good time as well i mean a good team but a good time Jones, it's time now to go to the next feature and it is back to england nights and see how the boys are getting on check this out put it on toby all right remember gilding stay upright toby like gilding would all right, let's go. Bye. Okay, Sarah. Yeah, no worries. Let's get down there, compete. The synergy between the programs is massive, and I think you can see that there with the connectivity with the not just the players but the coaches. I mean, there's a bit of a bit of awe from the young blokes towards the older blokes, but the coaches get that, and then we can break that down as well by well, our relationship we have to school uh, academy players anyway. So we we can break that down. I think that's massive. The more we can do this as a as a fighting and performance unit, I think the better we better our programs will be. I think it's I think it's as connected as it ever, as it's ever been, and and again that was one of the things that one of the measures that were put in place a couple of years ago. Everyone singing from the same hymn sheet, all buying into the same culture, and here's essentially like Team England. It's Club England, and this weekend I think you've got five or six England teams playing all around the world on the same weekend. I'm not sure if that's happened before. So everybody, everybody feels like they're part of something. It's like a, a family away from home, really, and that's what it's got to be like if you want to have success at this level. You need that continuity, as you say, to kick on and, and progress through the ranks and, and then enjoy success at the senior level. These teams are about developing players and it's, uh, 
it's amazing to see to see him progress so quickly. Really proud of them. Uh, you know, I've, I've seen obviously Harry and, and Morgan playing on telly in Super this year. Been a real good fist of it. You know, very proud of of how they've developed and, and uh, Smithy. Uh, he played against this year for Swinton. Uh, and although obviously we wanted to win the game, you know, a big part of me wanted him to have a, to have a strong game, and he did. And having that connectivity is massive. We. Uh, there's a reason why they play academy international football is because we know they're good players and fortunately for us as a game in this country they've managed to get their opportunity to play Super League. Harry Newman's a prime example, Harry Smith's had a sniff of Super League, Ollie Wilson's had a sniff of Super League. Harry, and that, having that to, ability to continuation, the continuation of programmes and bring people through can, can not only help us moving forward as a, as a rep, as an international nation. Paul's been great in terms of you know, uh, being across all the squads. Uh, you know, we have a good, we have a good laugh. There's a good mateship between us, uh, and you know, we're all very supportive in terms of if I'm not sure in, in how I should deal with the situation or, or something that's happening in the game. You have no problems in asking Paul or Jamie or Dave, uh, and I think we're all there to support each other's development. Let's compete, Danny. <laughs> Good heat, good heat. Hey, great work, good heat, boys. In terms of the Tech Tac stuff, everybody's doing similar things and delivering it in, in similar ways, but it's, it's the relationships and the connections you can build between the team, between the players, between yourselves, that eventually lead to success. And that's, that's a big part of how I, how I try and coach anyway, personally. It's a big part of the culture we try and, try and influence down there in London. And, and it's a big part of the culture that's going on here with England as well. You can see those relationships and connections are being formed. And, uh, and I think that's a, a big part of trying to build that social capital. And that's what leads on to, to success in the end. Yes. Good job, you know. Yeah. Shot. <laughs> He's only got one pace, hasn't he? Matty. <laughs> I like it, man. I shouldn't say this, but we, we shouldn't be judged on the performances of the Knights, even though we're England and we should want to win, which, don't get me wrong, I want to win as much as the next coach. That's what we're judged on more than anything. But I think more, more than anything, this programme should be judged on uh, these people who played for the Knights. Jack Hughes is a prime example, absolute champion professional champion player, champion person, and uh, he's now got his opportunity to go up when he's come through the nice system, come through England, played nice before, come again, captain to tour, his maturity now as a person uh, and his performances for Warrington, they've they've earned him a place on a Great Britain tour. That's how, from our point of view, that's the rewarding for our part of it. So when we see him play for Great Britain in uh, in New Zealand and Tonga and stuff like that in Papua New Guinea, that, that's, the, that's the rewarding thing for us. Joe Philbin's off the back of that as well. He went on tour last year, absolutely unbelievable person, just full of energy, you just throw anything at him and he'll just chew it up and he's, I think he's the type of person that Wayne will love it out there, so hopefully they can go well. So that's the, and Ash Handley as well, you're in there with the England with the nines, that's, they're the rewarding things for us. Fantastic insight there uh, around the England Knights camp. Mick, uh, let's take you back to the year I was born, 1982, because 82. That, 82. you were at Carlisle and you were Carlisle. the Man of Steel winner in the year mm. I was born. I'm like, Carlisle? Yep. Rugby at Carlisle, tell us the story, rugby at Carlisle. Well, it's, uh, I was at Featherston at the time and um, playing my old town, so, um, and you think, I mean, I went on to play another 10 years, but you think you end of your career, don't you? Getting into nearly into your 30s, like so. Uh, and no club was starting, and uh, they were advertising for coaches and players and whatever, so I put your name for it and ended up there with, uh, with Alan Agar, who, who went to school here, by the way, Richard's dad. Um, and we ended up taking over and uh, set a team up, and yeah, we won promotion in the first year, so a bit like Toronto, I think. But, how long did Carlisle last? I think it lasted about three years, I think something like that, or three, four years. They might have gone on to play yeah. in, in lower league, but uh, once, once funding stopped from yeah. football, then, then that one, it, it, was, it was very hard to keep going. The reason I ask is the similarities, obviously, with, with Toronto being quite a new club. What was the, uh, the collective opinion of rugby league fans back then about that sort of expansion and new clubs? How, how did they receive new clubs back in the Well, day? it's t to be fair, it was, it was only about three hours on bus. 
I mean, uh, that's, that's far from yeah. Great. I mean, <laughs> hey, I, I remember Whitehaven and working back in the day when when there were no motorways. Yeah. And well, I mean, sixty-five when I signed at Wayfield, and it went. It was eight hours. Yeah. Eight <laughs> hours in, eight hours back. Running? <laughs> sure. No, not running. Not bus. Eight hours. So eight hours to Cumbria because there were no there were no motorway. It was all you go via Newcastle. Yeah. Newcastle. All, all over you went, Jamie. Well, I don't know where they went, but you you had to stop off for a cup of tea. Where did you get from? Oh, yeah. I'm on way back, loads. <laughs> <laughs> and then get up for pit next day, five o'clock in the morning. Wow. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right now, Jones, it's time to go uh, to your partner in crime, uh, uh, one of your coaching buddies. Tell yeah. us about Chris Black a bit. He's so played at Milford, he's Milford man. Yeah, he's an Irish fella. Yeah. Um, not wrong with that, he's, he's a great character, really enthusiastic, he's very knowledgeable as well. He's had a couple of stints at Leeds. Yeah. He was with us in 2015 when we won't treble. Uh, and then he come back um, a year or so ago, and he's been very good. And it, we just thought as a club it was really important to keep the community engaged and active, both in heart and mind, uh, physically and mentally, and just come up with some ideas of what people can do at home with the furniture, with some tins of beans, and, uh, and just stay active really. Some progressive exercises to, to uh, bide your by for the next sort of two or three weeks. Um, and there it is. There it is. Check this out. This is uh, home workouts that the boys are doing and you can do too. This is a massive protocol going on at the minute with the, the first team squad anyway, making sure they're fit and healthy and ticking over, making sure we're ready to, to jump back on the wagon as soon as the, the Super League is open again. Uh, but if, for everybody else at home, it's really important to keep active and we've got a few tips for them as to what they can do at home in the usual surroundings of a, a kitchen, a bedroom, a garden, I don't know, whatever we're allowed in the next uh, six or seven weeks. So how did this idea come about? So absolutely, so um, we spoke um, in the gym earlier about what the idea was and the idea was to, to be active at home and to, to yeah. use this self-isolation period to, to probably you know, reintroduce back into some sort of exercise. So. Myself and Grangey got together and came up with a list of exercises that people can do in the safety of their own home, whether they've got equipment or whether they've no equipment at all. Just some bodyweight exercises, put it in a bit of a circuit. We're going to start with a sort of intermediate style exercises. We're going to give some regressions that maybe uh, beginners to, to the programme can do. And we're going to also give some progressions for the guys like yourself who really want to challenge themselves. Okay. Uh, what we'll do at the end is we'll go through a range of exercises that everyone can do and then we'll put it in a bit of a circuit and we'll set a bit of a challenge uh, over the, the 14 day period really to get people progressively fitter and hopefully by the end of the 14 days you've lost some kegs really in it. Yes. <laughs> So J J Jamie's going to go into a press up. Everyone's seen press ups before. We don't do anything really different on that. Uh, so you can see he's on, a, on his wrist. He's got a nice stable core here. Okay, uh, nice straight long body, and he's just going to get his chest to the floor and back up again. Good. Just give me a couple of those, Jonesy. Great. Okay, so again, if you do have access to any sort of uh, weights and equipment around, we're just going to show you a little exercise that you can do uh, for, a, for a pull muscle, really. So just jump down on the, under the press-up position, Dan. So what Dan's going to do is he's going to row one of the dumbbells up and back down. So again, this is a real core-orientated exercise as well, okay? So Dan's trying to avoid rotation through his hips when, he, when he's rowing. So there's a lot kind of going on in one exercise, really. Right, so just rolling up there, trying to keep as stable as possible. Just on the go, a little little progression of this is if Dan would bring his feet a bit closer together. Okay, now you can see when he tries to do it, how much rotation goes through his hip. Okay, so it's about muscles working in conjunction with each other and trying to stabilize through there. Good work, Dan. Okay, so you're gonna reach down, touch your toes, and then you're gonna walk your hands out into that long lever plank position that we just did there as well. Okay, so reach down, touch toes. What he's gonna have to cope with this time is movement through the hips. So nice, 
as out as far as you can please pal and then back into that standing position okay so you can go nice and quick down through that then avoid a bit of rotation just coming out so what he'll start to do is he'll start to feel that stretch in his abdominals now a couple more pal so straight straight out straight down get out as far as you can on that good keeping it high perfect even big strong rugby league players need to keep on that core stability prevents injuries and uh, keeps us performing uh, to our highest potential but what's the challenge from here Blackett what's the audience need to do from now on in so what we're going to do, we're going to start off with the 20 seconds of each exercise yep. and depend on where you sit in the ladder. If you want to start off with the, the regressions or the intermediate or the progressions, we're absolutely fine with that. Where the, where the challenge is going to be is we're going to add five seconds to it every day. So if you're doing 20 seconds on, on day one, yep. you're going to do 25 seconds on day two. Okay, and then we'll keep progressing, progressing, progressing so that uh, you keep getting fitter and you're starting to challenge yourself. You send your videos in, we'll, we'll pick some stuff up probably, and you'll all be doing it next year. Great idea. <laughs> you could be a big influence on Leeds Rhinos training in 2021 and beyond. Send us your pictures, send us your videos, let us know how you're getting on, and remember to stay active in your heart and your mind. Jonesy, absolutely fantastic there. Home workouts. Now, that the, that is a two minute version of a 35 minute uh, long tutorial so yeah. if you go to the rhinos um youtube website check it out see the full version and get fit and healthy i think it's really important to mention that even though it's leads the game comes together through these sort of times of adversity so if you've got your own ideas exercises videos about what club you're from send them in let's have a look let's let's see what you're doing inspire us educate us and motivate us to uh, take up a few challenges of our own as well now it's time to hear from the warrington wolves boys and two lads giving us their warrington wolves k2 teammates uh, anthony galling man of the people and also the giant midget uh, Joe Philbin, also known as Maggie. Also known as the whitest human on planet Earth. Fridge freezer, American, <laughs> hot point. <laughs> Lanky, charismatic, and hardworking. Big, thick, and awkward. We wanted the Aussies. Memo's, Jake Memo's got some pretty whack stuff. Yeah. He's got like the Birkin, the Bir uh, what do you call them, Birkin stocks? I don't know, he, and he has like the flare jeans as well. Yeah, but the I feel like he pulls it off up. though because he, he wears it with confidence, but yeah, yeah he, is, he is out there. There's a few, there's a ben few. Curry. Yeah, Curry's. Curry's Has he had a transplant? Nah, he's not, he's not. <laughs> he's not, but there is quite a few though, but. Chris Hill. Toby Kings. Uh, Toby Kings. Uh, yeah, from the back though. Yeah. And Jace Clark, I don't know why I'm saying Jace Clark, but he's just really good. Really good. Um, he's got that crocodile dandy thing about yeah, him. Yeah, I think that might just be it. Might just be the, I think he's like a bit like. <laughs> Real outdoorsy kind of man's man. Yeah. Like he'll, he'll do all the hunting and stuff Browse. like that. <laughs> We've got a dead WhatsApp group us. I've not been in long enough. Yeah. The time that I've spent in there, it's dead. There's no action. But it needed need to spice it up, Gelsa. There's a secret WhatsApp group that I don't know about. <laughs> I know there is. Red rum. <laughs> ka <-ching! laughs> Floodlights are on. That's <laughs> why so there's no lights on the set. You just have uh... Just using me. Yeah. Toby's, Toby's like, like special. <laughs> what? There's, a, there's a lot of candidates for that one. Lewis Johnson, he's, he takes on warming up. Oh yeah, Lewis. Yeah, yeah Lewis. I think Ellis Longstaff, young Ellis Longstaff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was telling us that he used to have like a few fights in school and he's like, I am actually hard, you know. So <laughs> I think he's self-proclaimed the hardest. Yeah, if you've got to tell people how yeah, hard you I'm are. Actually, yeah. I'm actually hard, you know. <laughs> Think about if he's only 85 kilos, he wants to, he wants yeah, to know. Yeah, yeah. Depends, uh, the guy's, he's had a few upgrades. Yeah. So, I don't know. Self I don't know where he sits on the ladder now. Self-enhancements, I've gone from a four to a six. If you ask me, I'm just being mod modest. I think, I think uh, who actually thinks they are the best looking, though, is... Um, Probably Tom Lynham. 
I, mean, I think he rates himself highly. Yeah. Um, he's a good sort, to be fair. Deck, pattern. <laughs> if, you ever want, if you ever want fake news to get out, just like whisper it to Deck and say, don't tell anyone. And it's out, and he changes it as well. Nick Murphy, the physio, um, he, he, he runs the playlists and we need to change it every day to get, we're trying to get pumped up for a gym session and... Yeah, it was awful tonight. Killing us. Flat tonight. Killing us. You know, you need to get pumped up and not listen to heartbreaking, depressing songs. There's a secret 6.30am um, Costa Club, if you didn't know. Oh. I think Chris Hill's in it, Steph Ratchford, oh, Charters. Wow. Okay. Keenan Brands. I don't know about this. Yeah, Keenan, yeah. I'm just going to drop in there. Oh, hello. Yeah. Hello, Lens. <laughs> That's what a before coincidence. Training every day, yeah, yeah, before training every day, so... I might, so. I might drop in just to throw a cat amongst the pigeons there. Eh? Yeah. Thank you for coming down, guys, no today. Uh, last thing to do on today's show, Jones, is to play the Bachelor's Amateur Try of the Week. And obviously, there's no amateur rugby on, so we're going to have a special Bachelor's game for all you fans starting next week. Right, let's go now and check out some young people doing what they do best playing rugby league. Jonesy, you've seen the tries. You'll be the last one to pick for a while, so who is going to be this week's champion and get a ball? <laughs> Zander Rycroft of Unflick Club Parkside. I well thought Zander done. Rycroft was the team they were playing. It's a great <laughs> name. Sounds like a place. Uh, and it's a nice team try as well. There's a few passes in there. Outstanding that everybody's sending them in. Can't wait for yeah. the junior leagues to uh, start up again. My lads just started playing in, in uh, the seven, so it's all good fun, but well done, Zander. Absolutely outstanding. We might put Bane's highlight reel in next week. Could do that. Mate, it was... Jones's kid, it, it's the funniest debut of all time. I reckon I see, I've got four boys and they're, they're all they're all decent players. They have yeah. been. Who's the best? At the minute, Yeah. this has been, I've seen, best game I've ever seen. One of my, like, a young kid player when he played last week, Ben. ben? Yeah, the, the, the week after one. the video. Yeah, yeah. Un unbelievable. Honestly. Yeah, just just natural, like, some of the stuff he does, changing hands, both feet and that, things that he try and coach into players, yeah. he does that, uh, thinking. Yeah, and I think he's, that's he's obviously it. going up with the ball. I, I think, I've seen a stat somewhere once, he talked about uh, 100 metre runners, world champions, and of siblings, the oldest has never been champion, it's always the ones that are lower down, so yeah. much to do with competing with your brothers or sisters. Um, and yeah, I think I think the fact that he's got three older brothers who were quite rough with him yeah. has just brought him on quicker than than natural circumstances. But he played really well, got up as a man at match, and the guy's head's melted on stage, and he's seen Bane, and he's read out <laughs> Ben Jones Bishop. <laughs> Can Ben Jones Bishop come and get one? Oh, I'm just like this. Oh, how do you do it? Keep for the album. Ben, ben Jones Buchanan. But there anyway, go. all good fun. No worries. Well, congratulations, Ben. We'll, we'll get some of your highlights on the show next week. Guys, thank you for coming today. Yeah, thanks Absolutely made my day. Brilliant. Can, last thing to sign the, the, uh, the old table. But next week, we will sneak away during the purge and we'll film a show. We'll get it to you. Bring you some rugby league content. We've got hours and hours of content to share with you. Thanks for watching tonight. Uh, thanks to these guys for coming in. Good night and God bless. We are working with the Rugby League All-Stars to help support and raise awareness for some of the heroes who play our game. To be a part of it, visit rugbyam.co.uk forward slash all-star event.